It was here, on the banks of a stream, in the year of 620 AD, that a Saxon called Guthmer built a settlement. Thirteen years later, Guthmer fortified his little settlement against the marauding soldiers of King Penda, the heathen. Guthmer's settlement was known as Bergsteel, meaning the place of the fortified homestead. Bergsteel is now called Burstel. church was built on this site in 1100 and after many rebuilds and additions St. Peter's Church stands proud amongst the scenic beauty of Burstall. Burstall has many connections with the Brontes of Howard, mainly due to Helen Nussey, who was a great friend of Charlotte Bronte. Indeed, were it not for Helen Nussey's collection of letters to and from the Brontes, I doubt very much that the world would have known of the Brontes' personal and sometimes tragic lives. Helen is buried here at St. Peter's. Another important Burstalite was John Nelson, a stonemason and Wesleyan preacher. His plaque can also be seen in St. Peter's Church. His stone-built study and sundial can be seen behind the Wesleyan Chapel, which he also helped to build. Too far from the tranquility of St. Peter's Church is the marketplace. On Thursdays, a very busy trading area.
These were Bramwell Bronte's words to his sister Charlotte as he left her. The ridings, Burstall, home of Ellen Nussie, Charlotte's friend. The ridings were visited often by Charlotte and in fact became Thornfield Hall in Jane Eyre. Although now surrounded by industry, the owners have tastefully extended. Further along this road stands the Wesleyan Chapel, where John Nelson's study, mentioned earlier, can be found. Across the road from the chapel is the old wine and spirit vaults and Brookroyd Lane, which leads to another Nussie residence, where Charlotte Bronte stayed. Brookroyd House. It is said that Charlotte sat in this very garden correcting proofs of her novels. Close to Burstall, in Gummersall, is another Bronte connection. The Red House. The Red House, used by Charlotte as Briar Mains in her novel Shirley, it was in actual fact the home of another friend of Charlotte Bronte's from her school days, Mary Taylor. Built in red brick in 1660, which was extremely rare for that date, hence its name. The Red House, home of the Yorks in the Shirley novel, is now open as a museum with events and activities running throughout the year. A short distance from the Red House lies another Bronte connection, Oakwell Hall. 
visited often by Charlotte and her friend Ellen, this semi-fortified Elizabethan manor house was the field head, again in the Shirley novel. Oakwell Hall is now the centrepiece of a large country park. The hall was built by John Batt in 1583, around an even older house whose timbers can still be seen. On June the 30th, 1643, at the height of the Civil War, another bat, Captain John Bat, fought for his king against the Parliamentarians in the Battle of Adwalton Moor, not a mile from Oakwell Hall. The Royalists, under the Earl of Newcastle, defeated Sir Thomas Fairfax and the Parliamentarians, who retreated past Oakwell Hall Burstall Church and up the hill past the Red House in an effort to return to their base in Bradford. This battle is often reenacted by members of the Sealed Knot Group here at Oak Grove Country Park. In the King's Army now, son. In the early 1920s, Oakwell Hall was to have been bought by the United States and shipped to America as the gatehouse for London Bridge, which was also to be taken, brick by brick, to Arizona. However, two benefactors, H. Norman Ray and John E. Sharman, both Bradford wool merchants, bought the hall and donated it to what was, in 1928, Burstall Council. Oakwell Country Park at Burstall, a place for a good day out for all the family.
Looking northeast from Oakwell Hall lies a conurbation of council dwellings, all of the streets acknowledging Burstall's Bronte connection. Almost at the top of Fieldhead Lane, a small cottage carries a plaque dedicated to yet another famous person from Burstall, Joseph Priestley. Joseph Priestley was born in Burstall in 1733. A minister of religion, he conducted scientific experiments in his spare time until 1773, when the support of Lord Shelburne enabled him to devote all his energies to his own projects. Priestley established a simple method for the extraction of carbon dioxide, which was the foundation of the soda water industry. He is, of course, mostly known as the discoverer of oxygen. His statue in Burstall's marketplace commemorates this event. In 1794, because of his opposition to his political beliefs, Priestley and his wife left England for America and they lived the rest of their days in Northumberland, Pennsylvania. He died there in 1804. The locals are proud of the fact that they themselves light up the marketplace and nearby streets at Christmas. Improvement Group organized this and many other attractions. Shortly later, but uh, hope you can just bear with us a few minutes. Thank you. We've got the fire coming down the hill now. Could you give the, the rest of the order, ladies and gentlemen? Keep it nice and quiet, please. If you look up the hill, we've got some uh, some choirs coming down the hill for you. So. Mrs. Haig will be turning the lights on in a short while. If you'd like to come up, please. And now to the switch on the lights, I've been told that there should be a countdown. Five, four, three, two, one, zero.
From the historical aspect of Burstall, with the Brontes, Joseph Priestley, John Nelson and such, Burstall is a pretty village in its own right, being, as it is, almost at the centre of Britain, with its motorway connections. It is of no surprise that major retailers, food chains, cinemas and hotels find Burstall the place to be. However, all this influx of commerce has not changed the heart of the village. And of course, taking part in the Britain in Bloom competition. Whether your interest is the Bronzes, Priestley, Nelson, local history, or just a nice day out, Burstall is the place. this. 